Hello, I'm Jim LaJoy, and I'm the <coughs> inventor and manufacturer of the all-season solar cooker. Um, welcome to my workshop. Today I'm going to uh, go through the unboxing and assembly of the all-season solar cooker camper, also known as the all-season solar cooker 17, also known as the all-season solar cooker wide body. This is our um, our only version of the cooker that we now have available. Um, what you're going to receive is a box like this. Uh, get the solar cook label, label on it. Your label will be on it. Uh, uh, we're proud to say that we don't put any packing materials in the box. It's everything in here, except for the box itself, is something that you're going to need to assemble the cooker. You'll find the following items in here. Here's a, the first thing that comes out is a, um, our folding cooking rack. I'll just set that aside for now. Uh, next thing that comes out are your two reusable cooking bags and they're folded around a 14 page instruction booklet, uh, which you should keep. And there's a couple of little bag ties in there. I don't use them much, but they came with the bags, so you get them. Um, let's set all this aside. Here's the hardware pack, and here is everything that you need to assemble the cooker. These are important. These are, we call these elevation bars, and there'll be two of them uh, in, in each kit. And then finally, what comes out is the uh, cooker body itself is folded up. Uh, fairly small so it'll fit in this box and you can either uh, recycle the box at this point or you can keep the box if you want to put the cooker back in it so let's just set that aside <clears throat> the first thing we do with the cooker when we get it out of the box is we open it up till its fullest extent you're going to get a lot of reflections off of this. And there we are. We're opened up. Um, now, coming from the plant where these are manufactured, we do some folding right here. But some of the other folds haven't been, um, well, folded yet. And uh, before we start any assembly, we're going to have to go ahead and, and, and fold those. So um, I usually use a... A straight edge you don't really need to what you've got here is you've got a a, a place where the the die stamp has has kind of crushed the plastic there a little bit and that's the fold and what you want to do is you want to hold your hand down against one edge of that and then from the other side in a in a quick motion you pull it up and it's going to go up easily about that far and then what you need to do is push it down even further until you've got the silver side and the silver side actually touching each other. Now you're not going to hurt anything by doing that, um, but with each of these folds, this is what we're going to do. We're going to try to break in the plastic because it, you know, the plastic comes stiff like this. It likes to stay stiff like this. And um, just like breaking in anything new, you have to flex it a lot to get it to where it's supposed to go. So start with that, and you really want it to, this, this is so important. If you don't do this part, um, the cooker's not gonna assemble correctly, and you're not gonna get good results. So do the folding as required. And you do that on each one of these uh, as they come along. Again, holding along the, the score line here on one side and taking your other hand underneath and quickly snapping up like that. It makes a nice clean break. And I use the palms of both hands to push down and get that all the way down. And then I break it backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. Do that a number of times. 
And even after doing that, it still tends to stay straight. But when we get into assembly, you'll see that, that uh, that's a, a real key feature there. So um, I'm going to stop the video right now. You should take your cooker and do just what I've done and do it, um, yeah, just right there. And then we'll get back to the next step. Okay, so we folded uh, one set of reflectors. And now we're gonna, we turn, I turned the whole cooker around. So these big round reflectors are down here at this end. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with them. I'm gonna hold along the score line there and I put my hand underneath and make a quick snap, make a nice clean break, push all the way down using my weight and the heels of my hands and then break it back just like that. And then back and forth and back and forth. Um, get that going. Come over here to the other side. You know, hand down, hand behind. A quick break. You can hear that little, that little snapping sounds that it makes. Um, I really want to emphasize that it should be a quick break. Um, if you try to do it slowly, it, it won't come out as clean. So, all the way down on these guys. So now we have folded uh, this set of reflectors. We fold the, the set of reflectors at the other end. And now there's two more reflectors that we have to fold. And I call these, these are the side reflectors. And they fold just a little bit different. Um, because they're going to always be bent outwards instead of inwards. So, uh, again, because the score's on this side, we hold our hand along that score and make a, make a quick snap like that. Press down. And I'm going to do the same to the other one here. Um, along the score hold down and a quick snap brings it up um, by the way uh, your cooker may have well actually it will always have uh, some wrinkles right there in the folds uh, but those are of no significance whatsoever uh, the things that you want clean and clear are the big reflectors and the top side uh, the side reflectors, any wrinkles anyplace else, like this one right here, you can press it down with your finger. It's not uncommon to see them. Um, it just happens in the laminating process. But that, um, anyway, that's, that's um, we've, now we've broken all of our folds. This is good, all right? And then the last step on our folding is to turn the whole thing upside down and let's get these side reflectors again there we go get our side reflector again and just fold it all the way back and I'm pushing down as hard as I can and get those get that one out like that and get this one out like this now having done that it's going to be much easier to assemble the cooker <clears throat> So we'll turn the cooker back, uh, shiny side up, and we're going to go to our hardware pack. The contents of the hardware pack will be uh, the, the wooden block. With the pin in it is the sun sight. You'll get four black rubber washers. You'll get six fender washers. These are made out of metal. Uh, you'll get two hex nuts right there. And the hex nuts, their location is important. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. You'll get six elevator bolts. An elevator bolt looks like that. It's, it's got a, a great big head on one side and you will get six wing nuts and that's your that's your complete bag uh, there's also a photograph of that in the instructions so you can check and see what you 
what you've got there. So um, step one of assembly, we're going to turn the cooker in this orientation and you can pause if you need to to get that the way you want it. Um, <clears throat> now the first step is I take an elevator bolt and um, on this panel here, the side panel, I'm going to insert that elevator bolt right through this hole. Can you see that? Can you see where it came out there? That's what you're looking for is the elevator bolt coming through that hole. The next step is to take the assembly tab and we're going to just rock it up like that and we're going to stick that bolt right through that. And that's, then that's what you want. You want this um, the elevator bolt going through the side reflector and then going to, through the assembly tab. You finish that installation and attachment by using a fender washer and a wing nut. Just spin that down. Now there's no reason to get this tight. It just doesn't need to be tight. So I just, you know, barely snug it down with my fingers and that's that. Um, now we're gonna turn the cooker around and do the same thing on the other side. We, um, we take a, ele I'm sorry. We take an elevator bolt and it goes through the side panel like that. You can see that that's where the elevator bolt is sticking out. Then you take your assembly tab and just right through like that. Okay, that's a, and the final attachment occurs with the fender washer and a wing nut. And again, we're only going uh, just barely snug on that. That's all we have to do. Okay, so this next um, part is important. It's a, it's a place where uh, people tend to get confused. That uh, The parts we're gonna use right now is an elevator bolt or are an elevator bolt and a hex nut. Um, now we have uh, two sets of reflectors here. I, I call this one the big round reflector and this one is just, well, it's not the big round reflector. And we're gonna take the uh, elevator bolt and we're gonna come in from the outside, or from, I'm sorry, from the inside, the silver side to the outside like that. We've got our elevator bolt coming out right there and we're gonna attach a wing nut, or not a wing nut, but the hex nut to that. And this is an important uh, part to, to get right. It just goes down, you know, again, finger tight. But what that hex nut does is when you're, uh, when you're moving, because this all articulates, when the cooker is moving, uh, that hex nut is just gonna act as a little spacer right here to uh, make sure that when other things are attached to that, that we don't tighten them down enough where things bind and they don't move. So it's a spacer, it's just taking up space, that's it. But it's an important part of the construction. Uh, the next step is on that same elevator bolt, we're going to attach uh, a elevation bar. The elevation bar can go this way or can go that way. I tend to use it uh, Either way, but that um, the elevator the elevator bolt goes through one end of the elevation bar. You add a fender washer and a wing nut, all right, let's try again. Add a wing nut there. Okay, now. And you just, you just, you don't make that tight. You don't have to clamp it down real hard because it's going to be a moving joint. You just snug it down. And so this is what you should see now. It's important that you 
Now, the, the big round reflector has got to go to the inside of the side reflector. That's, that's where it belongs, okay? Um, you don't put it to the outside, you put it to the inside. And that's, again, important because this is an adjustable cooker. Um, the next step for this side is to take our not big round reflector and we're going to again insert an elevator bolt through that and the next thing that's going to go on that elevator bolt is two of the rubber washers so both washers go on like that you've got four in the kit you get you put two there so uh, now the big round reflector is going to go to the inside of the side reflector. The not big round reflector, this one here, is going to come up and it's going to go to the, to the outside of the side reflector. So what you're trying to get here is you're trying to get this reflector, then the side reflector, then that reflector. And once you've got that orientation, you... put the other end of the, of the elevation bars attached. You finish this attachment with a fender washer and a wing nut. And again, um, just, just finger tight. You don't gotta get real tight with it. Um, this, what we've just done here is we've created a little clutch and a brake mechanism there so we can adjust the cooker and then lock it into position. But at this point, um, you don't. So let's check our, check our work. We've got the upper reflector and it's on the inside of the side bar there. We've got the elevation bar attached with the hex nut behind it. We've got the bottom reflector, which is uh, to the outside of the side reflector. And we've got the elevation, we've got the uh, elevator bolt, um, rubber washers, elevation bar, uh, washer, fender washer, and wing nut assembled. And there's a really good diagram of these in the instructions. So uh, go back to your instructions if there's any confusion about how these go together. But that's how your cooker articulates, okay? It goes all the way down. Uh, to one and it comes all the way up to the other and that's that's your range this is what makes the all-season solar cooker different than anything out else out there on the market so let's turn it around and get the other side put together again we have the the big round reflector and we're going to fold it so it's on the inside of the side reflector panel we insert an <clears throat> elevator bolt and we add this hex nut. And that hex nut, again, is just acting as a spacer. It's a stop, it's a spacer, it just does, it keeps things from binding together. Uh, the next step is to put on our, our um, elevation bar and a fender washer and a wing nut. And I repeat that the, they don't have to be real tight. You just want that just barely uh, snug so it just doesn't fall off by itself. Uh, so the, again, this is to the inside of this. You see it right there, we're folded to the inside. Um, next assembly step, again, an oh, uh, elevator bolt, the two rubber washers, And making sure that this goes to the outside of that, we attach the other end of the of the elevation bar, put on our um, fender, washer, fender washer there, and let me pick up the bolt I dropped, um, and then we put on our wing nut. Again, just just snug at this point. So there is 
what the assembled cooker looks like. You can double check your work. You have this panel is on the inside of this panel and this panel is on the outside of that panel. That's the way it's supposed to be. So let's take a look at the assembled cooker. Um, it looks pretty good, but it's not right yet. The, um, the cooker is, is very narrow this way and that's not what its final configuration is supposed to be. On the last page of your instructions, you'll see that the uh, cooker has got uh, has a, 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 a much more of a stop sign shape to it. So to achieve that, we're gonna take, grab the cooker at the bottom panel and the top panel, and we're gonna flex it. Uh, we did a lot of flexing when we first folded it, but now we're going to do a lot, lot more flexing, okay? See, as we flex it, it tends to lay out much wider. Now, it had been like this, and now we're like that. Well, that's the position. This is how we want to look when it's finally done. So don't be a, This is tough stuff, so don't be afraid of, of uh, flexing it a lot, okay? It's, it's just you really want to get it broken in and loosened up. If you don't, um, and this is the, one of the problems that, that most new users have. If you don't flex it enough and get it shaped like this, you're not going to have uh, good cooking. This makes what we just did there, that flexing, will make over a 100 degree difference in how much you can, uh, uh, temperature you can achieve. So when it's flexed properly, that's uh, about 27 to 28 inches that way. I'll call it 27 and a half, which is fine. And from here to there is say 28 and a half, which is fine. So we've got a pretty good shape on that. Shape is not super critical, but that's wrong. Okay, you don't want that. What you want is this, okay? That's what we want. Now the final step to assembling your cooker. Okay, well the last step in our assembly <clears throat> Is attachment of the sun sight. This is the sun sight. It's a little block and pin assembly. Um, the, you'll see that there's a, a circle around the pin. I call that the one hour circle and that'll be used uh, in a later video to show you how to set up your cooker for uh, duration cooking. But let's put the sun sight on right now. The uh, bottom of the sun sight has, uh, we've got a groove in there, and you have a, a wide side, and you have a narrow side here. Well, the narrow side is gonna go on the inside of the cooker. So you can put it on the top uh, reflector panel, or you can put it on the bottom reflector panel. I'm gonna put it on the top reflector panel. Just put it, uh, doesn't have to be in the exact center, just even approximately will do. Um, it's a tight fit, so I just gently work it down until it's all the way down on both sides. Now, because it's used for aiming at the sun, it's important that we get it on straight. So um, you want to check your edges, and you can see that this, this, this edge is all the way down against the plastic, and that's the way it's supposed to be. And this one over here, well, we've got, uh, if you can see that, we've got a, a quite a gap there, and that's not what we want. So we want to really get that down so it's flush on both sides, and that that means it's, it's accurately installed. So that's, that's what we're going for there. That's the sun sight. You want it down flush on both sides and there you go that's your all-season solar cooker <clears throat> the um, reflective surface you want to, be, to use all the reflective surface and that's the purpose of the rack here the rack raises whatever pot you use is going to be raised off the bottom of the cooker so when the Sun comes in any Sun that comes in uh, from the bottom will be reflected up onto the uh, bottom of the of the pot that you're using and it really speeds cooking. 
you always want to cook with your rack in there. So that's the assembly of the all season solar cooker. Uh, this is the camper model or the 17 model or the wide body model. But uh, uh, it's, it, there's other videos out there I made about the, my original design. And if you have one of those, um, those are still valuable videos. But I'm putting this one up so that folks who have uh, this particular model, um, which is what we're selling here in, in um, October of 2020, uh, that, that you'll know how to put together your cooker. So thanks for be, being interested. Happy cooking. Um, you can reach me at uh, J-I-M-J-O-L-A at gmail.com um, yeah, or uh, call me with my instructions or my phone numbers in the instructions if you have any problems. But that's your cooker. Have fun. It's a great adventure. Um, the first thing uh, is you know, start small. Learn your cooker, learn its capabilities. Um, I cook anything from a cup of rice to a whole turkey in this, and so can you. It, it's, um, it takes a little bit of practice, but you'll do well and you'll enjoy it. So thanks for listening and uh, happy solar cooking.